Hey guys, what's up? I'm Slim and you're watching Slimothy TV. In this video, I've got a pretty cool one for you guys. Aeronet was kind enough to send out two of their brand new sensors for us to review. If you guys remember previously, uh, we did a video going over their CO2 sensors, their home air quality sensors. Those things have been rock solid. In fact, I actually bought one of my own just so I could have a second one to kind of compare and see if maybe I just got a juiced unit that was super good. No, the one I got from Amazon was just as good as the one that they had sent me. So I can absolutely vouch for the Aeronet 4 home CO2 air quality monitors. Those things are awesome. Now today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Aeronet radiation sensor. So you guys can read the back if you want, but we're gonna go ahead and pop this open. Now the next video, we're gonna be going over their radon sensor, which as you can see, it's a bigger box. It's a bigger unit. Radon is actually something that a lot of people don't think about, but it can be a big problem. So that's gonna be an interesting one to take a look at because I have a place where I can put this that definitely has radon. And I do have two other radon sensors. Now this itself is a radiation sensor. I don't know that I really have any other ionizing radiation sensors that I could compare this to, but let's go ahead and crack it open, take a look without further ado. So I'm just going to pull it up like so. And here we go. We have a quick start guide right there, as well as a dim ejection tool. <laughs> That's pretty interesting. And then uh, this is the link if you guys don't want to scan that. There it is. Internet Home App, of course, I already have that. Been using it for years. It is a very nice application. And let's go ahead and pull this out. And here it is. This is basically the exact same size as the other Internet sensors that we have. So this looks really good. Do not remove. Sensor to surface distance 15 millimeters. All right. We'll peel this off here. And you can see. That is the e-ink display. All right, inside we also do have two, are these double A's or triple A's? These are double A's, two double A batteries. So let's set this to the side, put these in. I like how these are very easy to uh, remove. All right, so let's go ahead and put these in. Now right here, you guys can see there's some different icons and some little pins you can change. So it looks like we got possibly Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, uh, and a couple other options. We're gonna have to read through and see what those do. I just popped them in there, it is booting up. So let's go ahead and close it up and let's see what this does. So I'm gonna move this out of frame and there it is. It says refining data. We'll let it do its thing here for a second. So I'm gonna set that right here. I was just beast mode in this to make sure there's nothing else in here. I really like that this is fully, you know, compostable, burnable. It's just paper basically. So very easy to get rid of. It's not like that annoying plastic. Now I just pulled up the quick start guide here so you guys can take a look and we will go over some of this a little bit more. So we got the integration time, total dose, dose rate, buzzer status, battery level, and dose threshold, dose rate threshold indicator at the bottom there. And here you can read about the different dosages and then the different colors, what they mean. And it does say it's gonna take a few minutes to get the first reading, so it is still doing its thing right now. Uh, and here is what it looks like when it's ready to use. Now, of course, this is just the unboxing portion. I'm going to have the full review in this video, so just sit back, sit tight. I'm gonna use this for a few weeks and I will come back with my findings. Now, in the meantime here, it does look like it's going to tell us about the configuration switches here. So this first one here appears to be the units. So you can get SVs or REM. We also have a pulse buzzer, which is pretty cool. So every time that it detects an ionizing radiation event, it will buzz similar to a Geiger counter. That's cool. Then we have Bluetooth, it's on by default. And then LoRa transmission, it says it's non-functional for home sensors. That kind of sucks. Uh, LoRa is really cool. And I do hope more manufacturers incorporate it because you can get transmission way further than Bluetooth. And we're talking about over a quarter mile in some instances. I don't know if Aeronut's you know, LoRa transmission can go that far, but I do have some LoRa devices and they are really cool. Anyways, this thing is still going, but one last look at it real quick before I cut the video and I will come back after I have gathered some data. But this is what it looks like. Super sleek just like the Aeronet 4s. I really, really like this design. There's something pleasant about it. It's not overly complicated. It's e-ink, just kind of sits in the corner and looks good. So I think the next thing to do is to pair this up. So as you can see, I already have, like I said, uh, this is the one they sent me uh, free for review. This is the one I bought with my own money straight from Amazon and they are in completely different parts of the house. I've been using this app for a while. So I'm gonna go ahead, click here and pair a new device. And there it is, it already found it. So I'm gonna go ahead and accept it. Now I just had to type in a code that was displayed on here. And here it's going to give a quick guide. So that's cool. It says intensity of radiation. Looks like you can adjust the rates at the bottom. That's cool. Let's go next, radiation exposure. And it says a fast increase triggers a dark background alert. Good, so it's easily visible from afar. Like if this is not right next to you, you can see it across the room. Radiation exposure history, that is awesome. So yeah, this is going to be super, super neat. As you can see right now, it's still refining the data. I'm gonna go ahead, let it do its thing, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, so it has been, as you can see here, 33 days, that this has been collecting data for me, and I've been testing it out, getting a feel for it, and I'm here to let you guys know how this Aeronet radiation sensor actually works. So just to quickly go over the device again, you can see at the top it says 33 days and zero hours. So that's how long it's been since I took it out of the box, powered it up. This can be reset at any time, 
But me personally, I wanna keep it running. So it gives you a running total right there of how many millisieverts you've actually had of ionizing radiation in your environment. So right now you can see there's been 0 0.060 MSV. Currently there is about 0 0.07 at time of last reading. At the bottom, you can see green, yellow, red, and it will kind of indicate uh, what the current level is. So 0 0.07 is not much, so it's fine. You get your battery right there and then the units down there as well. Of course, on the back, you've got, you can kind of see through the translucent design. I really like this design, uh, but you can see you got your batteries in there and then a do not remove sticker. That is apparently where it is, you know, gathering this data from. I know it's tempting to remove it, but do not do that. So that's why that's there. That's this device, but let's talk about the app because that's what you really want to see. So I've been having it set like this uh, on my desk or next to my bed uh, just to see different levels. And it's kind of interesting to see the different spikes throughout the day. I'm absolutely not an expert on radiation at all. I do have a Geiger counter just to have on hand, but this thing actually measures the ionizing radiation around you. And I saw some interesting spikes, especially around like 12 a.m., 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. There were just certain spikes. Uh, maybe it's just my area. I don't know what it is, but I saw them even more in my bedroom uh, rather than my office. So I don't know what's going on there. It's kind of interesting, gives you something to dig into. None of the levels were, you know, scary or anything, but it was just interesting to see the different levels going up and down. Now here's the radon that we're going to talk about that here in a minute. That's a different video. So if you want to watch the radon, which I highly recommend you take a look into because radon is a completely invisible, colorless, odorless gas. It's radioactive and it's in most people's houses, uh, particularly in the basement. That's where it comes in. I don't know if you just heard that beep, but that was this thing right here. But anyways, radon is something that's incredibly scary. Something that I check for in all of my homes. Every home that I own right now has it and my office as well. We'll talk about that in the other video. But for now, let's talk about the radiation sensor. So here it is. I'm going to click on it and it's going to load up all the data really quickly. And here it goes. That's it. So I'm on the today view, which is super easy to see. I mean, all of my numbers are in the green. You can see where it's kind of higher and lower kind of makes you wonder what's going on at those specific points in time because this has just been sitting on my desk but it's interesting to see the dose rates uh, kind of drop around what is that five o'clock to six o'clock super strange not entirely sure why that may have been time that i wasn't in the room but i don't really know why that would cause ionizing radiation but again i am not a radiation specialist here is the long-term radiation so if i click on all i'm going to be able to see a very concise graph that lets me know basically ever since i got this thing it's been in the green so there's nothing to really worry about here but it is continually collecting for me and it's going to let me know if something were to happen. Now I can go onto a calendar mode here and kind of scroll back to a specific date if I want, or I can cancel out of that and just do seven days. Of course, in the seven day mode, there's not a whole lot to see. So I don't really use that ever. I only use the today view or I use the all time view. Now, if we head back to this tab again, I'm on these last seven days and I can really dig into the exact amount of ionizing radiation that was coming through right here. There was a big spike. I mean, big is relative because this is still hardly any radiation. It's still in the green, but at 4:43 PM, two days ago, there was a higher than average spike. And it's kind of cool to be able to go through here. I still haven't pinpointed what actually causes these, but the cool thing is depending on, you know, like right now I have it on seven days. You can see right here past seven days, 0.02 was the lowest and 0.18 was the highest. I go to today, 0.2 and 0.13 were the lowest and highest respectively. So this app really allows you to drill down and see what's been going on in your environment with regards to ionizing radiation. Now, of course, ionizing radiation is the one that everyone's worried about with regards to like cancer and things like that. So that is why people might be interested in picking one of these up just to check your surroundings and see what's going on. Now, I really haven't noticed any issues with my surroundings so I don't have anything to worry about. Does that mean I'm gonna stop using this? Absolutely not. This is going to stay in my life somewhere, either in my office or in my bedroom, constantly regulating and letting me know uh, of the ionizing radiation. But having one of these can be super important. Now, if I hop into the settings here, I can actually change the measurement interval if I want. Of course, the more measurements it does, the less the battery life. But again, it's just double A's, just swap them out, put some new ones in. You got a buzzer if you want. Bluetooth range is normal. Smart home integration is on. Now, in case you're wondering, these are the intervals that you can switch it to. I like mine on five minutes buzzer that can be changed to every time it goes over a threshold. I personally keep that off. And if we were to scroll down, we can click on the warning threshold and we can either customize this or just keep it on default. Personally, I'm keeping in mind on default, but you know, you can change these to whatever you'd like so that you can customize your device. Now I have seen other folks use this to kind of detect radiation on things that they know has radiation. So for example, an old watch with the tritium tubes, they kind of take this and they kind of hover it over the watch. See this thing light up, it makes this little beeping noise. And it goes faster and faster as there's more radiation. Obviously it's not beeping very much right now because it's not detecting any, but when it does detect it, you'll just hear a little chirp and it'll beep and it'll let you know. But of course that can be turned off if you'd like. Now, like I mentioned, this is a running average right here, the 0 
that can be reset if you want. So if you move or if you take this through like an x-ray scanner at like the airport or something and it goes you know off the charts, you might want to end up resetting this. Uh, but I think they recommend taking the batteries out of this if you are gonna go through an x-ray scanner, just if you want to preserve the data that you've got now and keep that running total going. Of course, it would be cool to see what the ionizing radiation is in an x-ray, although that's been well studied and you can look it up online. But of course, if you were curious, you could put this on the conveyor belt thing at the airport and watch it go through and see what kind of levels it gives out. But Aeronet makes absolutely fantastic products. Uh, I'm just gonna show you guys this just for fun. Uh, this is the Aeronet 4, which we have a review on. I've bought one of these with my own money just because I loved it so much. But of course they sent us one free for review. Uh, and of course we also have the radon sensor right here. It's a little chunkier, but this thing is invaluable. This is something that I would gift to family and friends just to help them. Something like this is, in my opinion, very important. The AirNet 4, like I mentioned, this is probably the most accurate CO2 sensor that I have seen on the market and I've tested a bunch. Uh, and this one, I don't really have anything to compare this thing to because this is just in a league of its own. And it's kind of a niche product. Like this is not something that everyone's gonna run out and pay 90 bucks for and check out. But if you are in the market for something like this, it's just something nice to have around in case something were to happen or in case you wanna test something and see what kind of radiation comes off of it. So I will have this thing linked down below. Big thank you and shout out to Aeronet for sending this device out free for review. Again, keep it locked to the channel to see the radon sensor review. And if you missed our Aeronet 4 review for the CO2 and air quality, uh, check that one out. That video is great and it goes over pretty much everything you wanna know about it. Anyways, that's all I got for this one, guys. If you liked the video, hit the big thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.